Hey everyone, Liz here, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making these cute little t-shirt yarn handbags. So, let's do that! Okay, so you're going to need some t-shirt yarn and that's just about it. This is entirely knitted with your fingers, so just the t-shirt yarn. To make one of these, we're going to start at the bottom and knit around and around and around so there'll be no seams to sew up at the end. And this uses probably about two t-shirts worth of t-shirt yarn. This roll of t-shirt yarn is from a from a long dress. Alrighty, so we're going to start with a slip knot. Lots of people have different ways for slip knots, but I do it this way. Wrap around your fingers, wrap around behind, and then pull the behind loop through the other one, and you're ready to go. Slip knot. You want to tighten that up. So it's just loosely around your finger. That's going to be our tension for this whole project. You want each of your loops to be the same to have a nice even result in the end. And then we're going to make a little chain. So push your working yarn, so the bit joined to the ball, through the existing loop and make, it, and make a loop the size of your finger. And then just repeat that until you have a chain of 12 loops. That's three there, and by the magic of television, it's about to be 12. <laughs> Just keep going in the same way, and then you have 12. So you can see that's the length of the bottom of the bag there. So that's, that's where we're starting. And then we're going to knit down both sides of the chain. So we're going to start with, start with your end loop and knit down this top side. So that chain is essentially casting on. And so if you get your uh, yarn going in the direction that you are going to knit, it's easier. And we're just doing the same thing as we were doing, except we're leaving a loop. So you want one loop through that first loop, and then push your working yarn through the next loop along. And then you have two loops or stitches. Okay, and then we're going to do that all the way along till you get to the other end. And you have 12 stitches along that side there. You can see 12 loops all along one edge. All right, so now we're going to come back in the direction that we came from. So get your yarn heading back in that direction. Just makes it easier to work with that way. And then exactly the same as it was from the other end, you're just putting your putting your yarn through and creating a loop the size of your finger and then pulling through the next one. And you want to work this way all the way back to the to the other end. Right, so that's we're at our last stitch there and we still have 12 stitches. We've knitted one row and that's going to be the base of the bag. So, just a just a small base there to add a little bit of width. That, that's it, and we're going to now knit around and around the base and up the sides. Okay, so starting at this first stitch, back in the direction we were originally going. First job is just to knit those 12 stitches along, so just exactly the same way as we were doing, um, starting at this first stitch, back in the original direction. All right, so then when you get to the end, you've got your 12 stitches down that end. We're going to work our way around the side and then down across the other long side. So if you turn it around this way, you can see that first stitch. Well, we're going to add a, um, a line of stitching for the side of the bag. So that first stitch there is the one that your loop's already through. So you want to work your way back to the next stitch, which is the one on the end of the middle row, and push a push your working yarn through there to create the stitch for the row up the side of your bag and then you turn your work around and you're going to work your way across the other side of the bag so in much the same way as we did when we first worked our way down the side you're going to push one stitch into each of the loops just tuck that knot onto the inside of the bag there so just tuck that under and put your working yarn over the top of it and then make yourself 
your first stitch down that side. So just in the exact same way as we did when we first put the stitches, you work one loop through each of the each of the chains there. So now you've got 12 stitches down the original side, one stitch on the end to go up the side of the bag, and then 12 stitches down the other side of the bag. All right, and then we're going to turn it around and do the exact same thing as we did on the other end, which is on the end of that middle row, we're going to push another stitch through to go up the side of the bag. So there you've got your end stitch there. So now you've got 12 stitches on each side and one on each end. Now we don't need to go back in the direction we came from. We're going to continue working around in that same direction. So just around and around. When you get to the ends, you see we're going to be wanting it to curl up in this direction to create the side of the bag. So while you're working flat for these first couple of rows, you want to make sure when you go around the corner you put your, sti you put your stitches nice and close together and don't end up with a big bit of extra yarn in between the stitches. So just push your next two stitches together nice and close and work your loop through. All right, and you want to go around your bag for three rows. So here we are working around the end again on the third row around and just making sure you're holding those loops together at the sides at the ends of your bag there you see so that it can curl around in the right direction all right now we've got a few rows we've been around three times three complete times what we're going to do is turn our work so that we can work vertically so just straighten it out push it together like that and then you can turn it to the side and that way you can see you've got the bottom of your bag there and we can work around in that direction. So just exactly the same way as you were. It's a bit fiddly at the start until your bag gets it's organised. But then you get going. All right, so that's seven rows around. And this is where we are going to add the handle. So we're just going to cast off those stitches across there to create the handle. So you've got 12 stitches down each side, one on the one on the end there. So that's your, your end stitch. You've got one on the end. We're going to have two stitches there on the side. We're going to have the eight stitches in the middle. That's where we're going to have the handle. And then two stitches at the other end and then your end, then your, your end stitch there. Okay, so end stitch, first two. Now we're going to start on the next one after that and cast off the center eight. So you want to take that stitch and loop the next stitch through it, just like that. All right, and then again, take that loop and put it over the next one, pulling the stitch through. And then you just do that for all eight stitches across there. You can see in fast motion there, we're going to end up with we've counted properly we're going to end off up with the two stitches on the end again there and the one that's our side of the bag and then two stitches at the other end and the side of the bag now you just need to flip your bag over completely and repeat the exact same thing on the other side so there's your end stitch your two stitches and your eight cast off in the middle so you can see you have five left on each side your end stitch and two on each side of each handle. So there's five on that side too. All right, now we're ready to continue around. So just continue knitting from where your yarn is. Work it through the next two stitches there, which is the start of the next row. And then we're going to continue on around making the top of the handle. So what we have to do for the top of the handle is to make a chain, just like we did along the bottom, to, to do our next row of stitches from. But if we were to start the chain just from this loop, you could see here that it's going to make a bit of an odd bit at the end of the handle. So what we're going to do is just overlap that loop with the first loop that we cast off there and make a stitch through there and that'll give us a good solid side to the handle. 
So that's where we're going to start our chain, just going through the, the first loop um, that we cast off there as well. And then just chain just like we did on the bottom of the bag. And you cast off eight stitches, so you need to make a chain with eight loops so that when we make our stitches to go around the top of the bag through those loops, we've got the same amount of stitches. So there we go, eight, a chain with eight. And then what we're going to do is overlap that last loop with the first of the stitches on the other side and make a loop through there and then we've got the top of our handle. You want to knit your couple of stitches at the end of that row and you one across the end and then do exactly the same thing on the other side of the bag. Okay. Now we're going to knit one row around. Um, as you get to the corner there, because you overlap those two loops, you need to create yourself your, your second stitch there that was originally on the front of the bag. And then you want to do your eight stitches across the top of the handle. We're just adding in stitches here, just like we would, uh, just like we did at the start of the bag and like we did any other spot that we've cast on. So add your, stitch, add your eight stitches across there. And then continue knitting on to the other stitches at the other side of the handle. There you go. Just need to add some more yarn on here. Luckily I had a little bit more left. So you'll see in a minute that yarn tail will be magically longer. But we're just going to knit all the way around the top of the bag, one full loop after you've added the handles. So there you go, you've got, you've got one full loop knitted. And now what we're going to do is cast off around the top of the bag. So that's your last loop that you've knitted. Just like we did when we cast off the handles, we're going to cast off around the top of the bag. So just like we did when we cast off across the bottom of the handle there, we're going to work our way around the top of the bag, putting that first loop over the next one, and then working our way around. You'll notice that as you go around, that that's a bit tighter, but that's what makes that curve, it makes your bag curve in towards the top, the tightness of the casting off on the top row. So you make it all the way around to the last stitch there, you'll have your last stitch and you'll have your tail end of, of yarn there. First thing you've got to do is take your tail end and feed it through the last stitch, that way nothing's coming unraveled. The next bit's a little bit fiddly but what we're trying to achieve is to have that casting off, uh, that last loop blend in with the rest. So I've just sort of um, put it over the other loop to, to make it look a bit like the rest of the casting off, feed the tail in through and tie a knot. So it's keeping it secure and also blending that end in with the, the rest of the top of the bag so that you don't have an obvious, an obvious end there. Tie another knot if you like. I was wanting this to be super secure so I double knotted it. And then what you want to do then is feed your tail end back through the knitting on the inside of your bag. So just work that knot around to the inside there. Whichever, um, whichever way through the knitting it's going to blend in the best. So I've gone through the outside there and you can see how that's made the, the knot blend in really well. And then look onto the inside of your bag and just feed the tail end through some stitches, working your way down the knitting knot across, because if you work your way across when the bag gets stretched the little tail will come out. So work your way down and then after you've gone through a few stitches downwards in that direction you can cut the tail off. So you can see I've worked through a few stitches there and then just remove the tail and your bag is finished. And there you go, now you have a cute little t-shirt yarn handbag for the weekend. 
If there's any other t-shirt yarn projects you'd like me to have a go at, make sure you comment down below and let me know and I'll see how I go. Thanks for watching. Bye.